It's a known fact that one of the key factors that determine success in snail farming is the ability of the snails to lay eggs and that of the eggs to hatch successfully. So what happens in the free range system where the farmer has little or no impact on the hatching abilities of the eggs? Don't worry, in this video I'll be evaluating the egg laying and hatching performance of snails in the free range system. So before we do that, remember to like and subscribe to the channel to enjoy more useful content I'll be uploading in the future. And by the end of this video, you should know what to expect in terms of numbers of eggs and numbers of hatchling and also the output to expect after a certain period of time. So without wasting much of our time, let's go. In order to get a fairly accurate digit on the numbers of eggs laid and those who hatch in the free range system, I stocked the demo pen with just 250 mature snails. In Nigeria, we refer to them as point of lay (POL), and it's exactly two months now. But I've been noticing hatchlings in the pen as far back as a month ago. So I thought, why not look for a way to evaluate the exact amount of eggs and hatchlings in the snail pen? But I can't evaluate that by digging all the pen, no, it's impossible. So what I'll be doing here is I'll be using the sampling method where I choose a region in the pen and I dig, picking only the hatchlings, the eggs or any dead hatchlings are fined and using that as a value to calculate and estimate the numbers of eggs and hatchlings that must have been produced in the whole pen. During the course of digging, I found a clutch of Achatina Fulica Zatlin. See how plenty they are. This is just from a snail. And the Atlins are next to the buried egg of Achatina Marginata. So let me continue digging. After digging, I used the tape to measure the area of land I sampled. So I will use that to calculate the numbers of eggs and Atlin per area. Through the course of digging, I found quite a number of eggs and hatchlings and at some point I found a clutch of albino hatchlings, pure albino all true. I also found a dead hatchling, I broke some eggs, I injured some hatchlings in the process of digging. Whoops, collateral damage. <laughs> we have to experiment this so that you won't go through the stress. So let's go to the calculation phase. After counting the eggs picked, both the intact ones and the ones I broke, and also counting the hatchlings, well, I also saw some few juveniles. I was able to get 25 eggs, 27 hatchlings, and 3 juveniles from a total sampling area of 21 square feet. Now using these digits to determine or predict the numbers of eggs I'll be having presently in this free range system. I should be having 450 eggs, 485 hatchlings and 53 juvenile presently in just 2 months of stocking the greenhouse. Now using this digit also to predict what I should get after a year. That means the greenhouse or the free range system must have produced 5,679 eggs in a year time. But note, not all eggs that are laid will hatch and not all that hatch will make it to maturity because of the mortality rate in the free range system and the high mortality rate of the hatchlings in the free range system. That's why it's advisable to have an intensive system where you breed the snails and you raise the hatchlings to um, juvenile. Then you introduce the juvenile or the growers into the free range system for fattening. So, in conclusion, you can also get good results if you are operating a free range system, provided it's managed properly, but it's advisable you use a pen system or a concrete pen system for the breeding stock where you hatch the eggs yourself and ensure you have higher hatchability and you nursery them to the point of juvenile or grower where you only introduce the juvenile or growers into the greenhouse or the free range system for fattening to get better results so remember to like and subscribe to the channel to enjoy more useful content i'll be uploading and to stay notified when i release such videos till next time a peace